give you these numbers. What do you notice? That the next number, here we go, the next one is whatever the current one times what? Three. In this case, three. How do we come up with three? We notice each number three more than the other one. Six divided by two, three. 18 divided by six, three. 54 divided by 18 is three. So we call that R. R here is the ratio is three. That's why the letter R is being used. Or you might have 10, 5, 5 over 2, 5 over 4. What do you notice here? It's the first number, well, n number, I shouldn't say the first one. The nth number times one half or divided by two. Same thing, you can say dividing by two or multiplying by a half. If you're dividing, do you see, is R gonna be negative or no? No. Okay. R is one half here. So you can always just use multiplication. Yep, because dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half. You could have positive and negative, by the way, watch this. Eight, negative four, two, Negative one, one half, negative one fourth, R is negative one half. Each number, you take this, multiply it by negative one half. Mm -hmm. What's negative one half times eight? Negative one four, negative four. What's negative four times a negative one half? Positive two. What's two times a negative one half? Minus one half. What's minus times a minus? Plus. So R could be negative. So a n plus one here, it's whatever a n times negative one half. Still multiplication. It alternates sign. It goes plus minus plus minus plus minus. Now, if I said to you, let's take the top one here, and I said, can you tell me what the twentieth number is? Again, I can go through that and list them all to get the twentieth number. Or I can look for a shortcut. We do have a shortcut. It says if you want to find the nth number, it's always going to be the first number times r to the power of n minus 1. True? You'll see that, yep. Now, 20th number here will be what? A1, which is 2 times, R in this case was what? 3 to the power of what? 19. 20 minus 1. It's going to be a huge number. That's a 19. 2 times, 3 to the 19. Get ready for a huge number. Ready for that number? Two, three, two, four, five, two, two, nine, three, four. Times two. I already multiplied that. Yeah. Yep. Two billion three hundred twenty-four million four hundred fifty. I mean twenty-two. <laughs> five hundred twenty-two nine hundred thirty-four. Yep. Now, somebody would say, hey, that sounds like money. You put money in the bank. Yeah. Somebody comes to you and says, you know what? I'm going to give you 5% return on your money. I say, okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see what will happen. You go to Merrill Lynch downtown in Springfield, you see Jack Danucci. You go, Mr. Danucci, I got um, $10,000 to invest. What can you do for me? I'll say, forget it. I don't deal with small money. <laughs> Go see one of the people in my office. He's the big shot in the office. He's a friend of mine. So, but anyway, you get somebody in the office. I can get you 10% return, 8% return. You can? Yeah, okay. 
So if you get 8% return, just one time payment, so you start with 10,000, now it's gonna be next year, it's at 8%, more than this. So what do you do? You take that number, multiply it by what? 1.08, or you multiply it by 0.08 to get the interest, then you add it to the principal. So 10,000 times 1.08, and it will be next year, the money will be worth 10,800. The year after that's gonna be 8% more than this. So times 1.08. 11,664, and so forth. Every year is 8% is 8% more than the previous year. So when you divide these numbers together, guess what you're going to have? R is going to be, take any of these numbers and divide them, any adjacent ones. The answer is 1.08. That's why you multiply by 1.08. And the question is, how much money? Will you have... Just from that 10,000 you put in there, in 35 years. You were fortunate enough to inherit 10,000, you gave it to him and you walked away when you were young. At age 30. At 35, you're 65, ready for retirement. What do you have? Well, let's see. It's not going to be a huge amount, but let's see. A35 is equal to what? A1, R to the power of N minus 1. That's going to be 10,000 times 1.08 to the power of what? 35 minus 1, which is 34. Ten thousand times 1.08 to the power of 34. So you're going to have $136,901.34. How did you get 1.08 from 8% or 8%? If you're getting 8% increase, that means your amount of money you're going to have is 108, 1.08. It's 100% that you started with plus the 8% increase. Oh, okay, because you're adding yep. it back yep. to the first Now, we'll go back to that beach problem. I'll change it this time because I don't like the way it looked before. That area, 9,500. The beach problem, let's say we started, what was it, 9,500 square meters? Or meters squared. But I'm going to change the story. I don't like the way they stayed. Let's, just, let's assume the problem is that we're losing. Actually, the beach has been disappearing here at the rate of 6% per year. We lose. 6% of that beach area every year. That means if you start with 9,500 today, how much you're gonna have a year from now? If you're losing 6%, that means what you have left is what? 94% of what you used to be. 94%. So you take that number, multiply it by 0 0.94. 8,930. The next year is going to be 0.94 times that number. 
A394.2, and so forth. And you're thinking of buying that piece of land. This is in Cancun. The guy trying to sell you this timeshare. You go, it's wonderful. You know, you go, well, so enough. I'm not going to have a beach there. I like the beach. But it, you keep losing 6%. So in Cancun, you, if you're from the U.S., you can't own that land. You can lease it. I mean, when you buy it, I think you lease it like for 50 years or 100 years. When the time expires, that's it. They take it away from you. So if I'm going to buy something, I want to make sure it lasts me that long. So I said, I need at least, I don't know, how much you need for the beach, if you like the beach. We need to make sure we have at least 3,000 square meters. So how long, how many years, how long it will take to shrink to? Shrink to lose to what? That beach to, let's say 3,000 meters square. Because when the time comes, I'm going to sell it. Because after that, it's not going to be worth any money. So I want to know how many years can I enjoy that? So I'm telling you what that number is. We're looking for the time. An equals A1R to the power of N minus 1. I'm telling you what that number is going to be there. 3,000. I know what the initial value is what? 9,500, right? R, which is what? 0.94 to the power of what? N minus 1. I picked this intentionally. I changed the question for a reason because I want to see if you remember your stuff from, last, from two weeks ago. What kind of equations you have here? That's an exponential equation. The only way to solve it is by using the log or the natural log. Absolutely. Then you move the yep. So first thing first. Yep, exactly. You're going to divide both sides by 9,500. What is 3,000? Divided by 9,500. Point. What'd you get? I said it in decimal. Yeah, what'd you get in decimal? I mean, I said it in um, fractions. Oh, I'm sorry. Point Three, one, 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 six, one. roughly. Yep. Now, to solve that number, what do we do? You can either take the log or the natural log. It doesn't really matter. Yep, move the exponents to the front. N minus 1, the whole thing times what? The natural log of 0.94. Divide by the natural log of 0.94 to get rid of this side. N minus 1, let's see what that number is equal to. The natural log of 0.316. If your calculator puts parentheses for you, make sure you close them. Otherwise, the order of operation will kick in. You'll have the wrong answer. 18.6, yep, 2. Now you got to add the 1 to both sides. 19.62 equals N. So basically you can have that, that house or that condo, the timeshare, for 20 years before you lose most of it. And you're down now to 3,000 square meters. It's time to sell it. Let somebody else take the loss. Do, does the problems that we're going to do deal with log or is that just one year example? I don't know. I just made that up, actually. I don't think. They could give you something like this where you have to deal with it. You know? Can you do it without the log? No. no. If it's an exponential? No. No. Yep, and the, the natural log of this is negative. What's negative over negative? Positive. Then that'll be a positive here. Yeah. No, I thought the natural log of 3.16 was 
No, it's not three. Point three one six. Oh. Point three one six. Now again, if we're looking at how much land we lost here, how much land we lost, we say, well, every year we lose what? 6%. 6%. Six percent, six percent, six percent, six percent, six percent. If I want to see how much land altogether, if I want to add them, I'll find the total land that we lost. That'll be the sum. So do we have an equation that will find the sum for us? Yeah, yeah we do. The equation for the sum is A1 times 1 minus R to the N, the whole thing divided by 1 minus R. A1 times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. So if I write this sequence, let me write something here. <coughs> 2 4, 8, 16. You see what's going on here? R is what? 2. If I want to find the sum of the first 15 numbers, this equation says you can find that by going what? A1, what's the first number? Two. two. One minus two to the power of what? Fifteen. Fifteen over one minus two. Two times one minus, let's find two to the fifteen, another big number. 32,768, all divided by negative 1. What's 1 minus that number? So that's 2 times negative 3, 2, 7, 6, 7 over negative 1. 1 minus 32 is negative 32. 1 minus 32, what is it? 32,768. No, no, 32,768. Take away 1 from it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so the sum of the first 15 numbers, if you do them, is 65,534. Let's try another one. Let's reverse this one. Go 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth. No, start to shrink there. What's R equal to? 1 half. 1 half. If I want to add the first 500 numbers, I did 500 intentionally. You know what? Let's make it 50. It won't make a difference here. I was trying to prove a point here. After a while, you see that number becomes what? 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1 32. Guess what's going to happen to that value? It become almost zero. It's not even worth adding. And that's what will happen to it. Because it's so small. So if the 500 definitely will prove that, 
But I said, let's do 50, even 50. When you get to the 50th number, you'll see it's probably not even worth adding. Too tiny at the, after a while. So now what do we have? A1. 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R, which is what? 16 times 1 minus 1 half to the power of 50. over 1 minus 1 half. Wait a minute, is that 50 inside the bracket? No, just the power, just the 1 half raised to the power of 50. In the previous one, you had 15, all of that. Yep, there's another brackets right here, two sets of brackets. I'll make a square one and a round one, how is that? I'll make them different colors so you get to see them there too. The one minus that number is still there. But because the one half, I have to put them in parentheses to the power of 50. Or 0 0.5 to the power of 50. That number is going to be almost zero. It should be zero on the calculator. Yeah. 0 0.5 to the power of 50. Notice my calculator says 8.8 .8 times 10 to what power? Negative 16, that means move the decimal point 16 places to the left. Yeah. So what's the value of that number? Zero. Zero. That's actually, I'm laying the foundation for the next section. When you go to add infinite of them, not just 50, like 70, 100, 200, 300. Million. Notice if I take 0.5 to the power of 100, what do you think that number? Nothing. Yeah. Negative 31. 31 zeros before that number. Base yep. So this becomes 16 times 1 minus 0 almost divided by what? 1 half. 1 minus a half is 1 half. What is 16 times 1? 16 over a half. When you're dividing by half, it's the same as multiplying by 2. That's a 32. So 16 divided by a half, which is 32. Yes. 